Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and this evening we'll be having a look at the GFS, the GM, ECMWF and the GFS ensembles for the upcoming uh, next uh, couple of weeks. Now at the moment it's quite dry, settled and reasonably quite warm and spring like during the day but colder at night. However towards next weekend so in about five, six days time it does look like we're going to be turning colder again. Generally still will be dry but there could be some wintry showers around, uh, potentially in the north and the east, um, and some quite hard overnight frosts. Do remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you do like and subscribe, as it does really help me out. Now, currently we're having a look at the GFS, uh, and you can see we've got this big area of high pressure over the top of the UK, 1,035 uh, millibars, um, and with upper air temperatures not particularly high, it does mean that overnight the temperatures do drop around to around freezing, 1 degree, 2 degree, quite widely. And in the day, get up to maybe around 10 to 12, maybe 13, 14 degrees, and maybe a th or 15 degree in some localised spots, especially where you see that sunshine. It does feel quite warm, but as soon as that sun sets, temperatures do plummet. Now this sort of weather pattern is going to be remaining with us for the next few days. We're going to remain with this sort of southeasterly flow um, with a big area of high pressure. Now this high pressure is going to extend towards Greenland and Iceland and this is what's going to give us the potential, some quite calm conditions towards next weekend. So Friday it looks like is when that cold air is going to arrive and you can see the minus five line moving through. Now it's early March now so it's into... Um, uh, meteorological spring, um, but still can be very cold. Uh, and with sort of this sort of northeasterly flow, um, there is quite cold air within it. Could be a potential for some snow showers. Um, with the quite strong sun we have now, there's it gives it even more oomph to to, uh, to the North Sea um, to produce those convective showers. The uh, the area of high pressure is quite close to the UK, centre towards sort of Scotland, but you can see. In the southeast, east, northeast, you can see we are in the greens, which is showing lower pressure and more instability, which is why I say this could be potential for snow showers or wintry showers around. Now, it's not going to feel bitterly cold. It's going to feel around four, it's going to be around four, five, six degrees in the day, and then around freezing, maybe a bit lower overnight, especially where you are towards the centre of the high with lighter winds. Now, it does mean in the day, um, the showers that we could be seeing uh, could fall as snow uh, or sort of hail or growl pool sort of wintry mix and there's unlikely to be any settling snow around other than potentially some higher ground again it's very localized and i'm not i'm not going to predict any big snow for anywhere at this stage as it's very unlikely um and it's most likely just to be a few snow showers where you might just see a few flakes uh for maybe half an hour or so. So yeah, just for those wintry uh, and snow lovers out there, it's just one to watch really. Beyond that, uh, as you can see, the high pressure does topple down as the jet stream sort of collapses over it. But the high pressure maintains over towards uh, the top of the UK. Um, and if we have a look at the 850 hp temperatures, you see it's still reasonably cold, um, upper airs, still below freezing. So overnight frost again, but again, probably a bit warmer in the day, maybe 9, 10, 11 degrees with strong sunshine. We're feeling, again, potentially quite spring-like um, during sort of the middle of the day. Beyond that, lower pressure does look like it's going to be rumbling back in off the Atlantic. Atlantic. We could be seeing the stormiest spell of weather we've seen for quite a while. You can see very big purples uh, and blues out in the Atlantic. Low pressure, really uh, spiraling up, you see very bitterly cold air, remnants of that uh, of the North Pole spilling out of the Atlantic, combining with warmer air coming up from Africa, and that's uh, spinning up these very deep areas of low pressure. This could, if we see what happens on the GFS here, create warm air infection where it pushes higher pressure up the Azores High from the south. Um, and it, could, and it could send us quite warm, maybe even sort of mini heat wave, and with big upper airs and air of high pressure. But remember, this is 384 hours, and if you do shift this along slightly, and you put those lows over the top of the UK, it would be much cooler, maybe even colder, uh, and very unsettled with some heavy, uh, heavy rain uh, and strong winds. So it really is just one to watch um, beyond, uh, beyond sort of the next seven to ten days. 
Now if we have a look at the GM run, you can see high pressure at the top of the country, and as we move through, you can see the high pressure moves towards the north, does pull in that sort of northeasterly flow, and if we have a look at the upper air temperatures, you can see reasonably cold air does engulf the country. And if we move back, you can see if we look at the temperature deviation, it's pretty cold in the southeast at least. Um, further western areas, uh, f further west, it's a little bit milder, uh, but generally still quite cold overnight. But that high pressure does topple, and you can see towards the end of the run, big areas of low pressure moved in. Wouldn't rule out a named storm in there, um, potentially towards sort of the middle uh, 3rd of March. Now if we have a look at the ECMWF, you can see again, high pressure over the top of the country. Moves towards Greenland, uh, we do start to pull down those sort of northeasterly winds. Uh, now the ECMWF doesn't go too cold with them, but again, generally quite cold under high pressure. Uh, quite big overnight frosts, and you can see upper airs are around 4, 6, uh, 8 degrees below average. Um, so yeah, pretty cold uh, with that. Beyond that, again, you can see low pressure diving in off the Atlantic. And one interesting thing we are seeing is the potential for the jet stream to push southwards, allowing these storms and these low pressure to sit over the top of the UK. Now what it does do is you can see on the colder side of the jet stream, you can see uh, the zero degree ice firms uh, much further to our south, and you can see the minus fives moving in. If we had this sort of pattern in January, it could be quite a big snowmaker quite widely if we do see a push of cold air out. But given it's in the middle of March, um, the chance of any snow with this sort of cold northwesterly zonality um, really would only be towards the Northern Hills. Uh, I remember January 2019. Um, end of January 2019 we had quite a lot of snow in some regions especially in the south southwestern areas saw quite a, quite a lot of snow and that was to do with a uh, northwest uh, jet, jet stream displaced um, all the mild air to our south with a northwesterly low pressure so we got loads of low pressure and within quite cold air um, got an air of low, little air of low pressure similar to the one developing here uh, in parts of southwestern areas engulfed in quite cold air and it did produce quite a lot of snow even though it wasn't from a massive sort of blocking pattern but unfortunately it is middle of march so it's unlikely that we will be seeing uh, any snow other than maybe over some hills and mountains in scotland now finally if we have a look at the gfs ensembles for london you can see temperature and uh, precipitation you can see a bit of precipitation when that cold red does come in with that colder front potential for a bit of snow over higher ground with that but generally quite dry either side of that you can see the quite a strong dip off in temperatures um, down to maybe minus five or even below um, so again quite cold uh, only for maybe three two or three days uh, before temperatures generally do try and recover to around average to maybe just a below average again t a tad below average with uh, a lot of low pressure uh, cold zonality um, again if this was January or December you could have drop you could drop that um, the air would be maybe a couple degrees colder and then you could be looking at the prospects of more widespread snow. But with this, it's most likely going to be maybe seven, eight, nine degrees in the day, maybe two or three degrees at night, quite cold rain. Um, that's what we're looking at with this. If we do see that sort of displaced jet stream further southwards, if it's more like the GFS operational run, which is more of an amplification, it would m probably be quite mild um, and wet and windy. So it's definitely looking wet and windy in the longer term. Um, but for the next sort of week or so, it does look like generally quite dry, maybe colder later on, but fairly pleasant to start uh, to, to start March. If you have a look at the two meter temperatures, you can see around again uh, 10, 11 degrees over the next couple of days. Again, not really showing the, the, the depth of cold that we could be seeing overnight um, uh, at two meters. You know, it could be getting down to maybe freezing or one degree. Um, GFS ensemble is not showing that too well, but you can see so, towards seven, uh, 6, 7, 8th March, highs only around 5 or 6 degrees and lows getting to around freezing. So that's the sort of temperatures we are looking at. With cold upper airs, again, any showers could be wintry. But again, I can't really say anything uh, until near, much nearer the time whether we do see any snow showers. That really does depend on the flow, any little features coming in, uh, and the exact orientation of that high pressure. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the subscribe video, and I'll see you again for another video soon.